And I said, quiet now. See, you don't want the Holy Ghost that I'm talking about. Because when you've learned to be with familiar spirits, you like the spirit of this world because it allows you to look at the things you shouldn't look at. It allows you to say the things you shouldn't say. You don't want the spirit of God that lives inside of you that when you begin to think that thing or look at that thing, it goes, ah! Mm. I didn't get saved, saints, to get religious. I got to have the real thing. All, listen to this, all the books, all the events of the book of Acts give us credence to Mark's statement. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, put it on the board. And now I'm going to land it. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. Besides this evidence, it was also established and plainly endorsed by God who showed his approval of it by signs and wonders and various miracles, manifestations of his power, by imparting the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the believers according to his own will. Have you hear that? Because if you read the rest of this, it says they laid hands on the sick, the sick will recover, and they dealt with serpents and all the things they drank didn't hurt them. And because the Holy Spirit was in them. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4 gives us an evidence again. And it's talking about besides evidence. It was also established and plainly endorsed by God who showed his approval of it by signs and wonders and various miraculous manifestations of his power and by imparting the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the believers according to his own will. Yes. Have you know that God's people ought to have power in their life? Yes. It's an embarrassment to me when I hear born-again Christians that have been saved 15, 20 years and there's no power in their life. They've only got the power to complain. They've only got the power to murmur. They've only got the power to lust. You need to have the power to be able to look at those things and say, in the name of Jesus, leave. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We need church with power, saints. The world needs us to have power. We need to have the power of discernment. Yes. So we can discern what's right and what's not, what's an evil spirit and what's not. Yeah. Today, we prepare for what will be celebrated by millions around the world as the day of Pentecost next Sunday. There are those that will celebrate this like world-changing event as a mere holiday or religious observant. observance. How do you hear that? Yeah. Do you know next Sunday, people are going to say it's on the calendars of the world. Everybody's going to say it's Pentecost Sunday. Catholics will say it. Methodists will say it. All those people are going to say it. How many of you grew up in church? How many of you heard it was Pentecost Sunday? You heard that? Saints, stop for a minute. Who hijacked this experience? Who hijacked this experience from the church? That day, Peter walks out and 3,000 got saved. And that day... Five of the miracles begin to happen and healings begin to happen. How many of you say, wait a minute, I need the same power that they had in my life because if that was for them, it's for me today. And we've been hijacked. We've been robbed. The enemy stole that celebration. It ought to be a power day. We ought to say, hallelujah, I got the Holy Ghost. You look, it ain't just speaking in tongues. I'm glad you do. I do. I hope you do. You can. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got to be born again. There are those that will celebrate it, though, just as a religious observance. There are those that will speak of it as a, uh, a post-event that happened once but never repeated it and renewed itself again. Thus, the powerless church. But we, on the other hand, will join the millions and are alive with the expectation of the Holy Spirit <laughs> constantly and consistently being revealed and manifesting His power. Look at Acts chapter 4, verse 31. We know the promise. Look what happened again. I, I, I said it to you a minute ago. My God, my God. Lord, thank you for fire. Thank you for fire. Look at it. Put it on the board. And when they had prayed. 
And when they had prayed, the place on which they were assembled was shaken. Stop for a minute. The Hebrides Revival by Duncan Campbell back in the 1900s, early 1900s, Duncan Campbell brought the Hebrides Revival in the 40s. And I want you to hear, he started it because two women were interceding. And, and the Hebrides is off of uh, uh, Ireland. And, and they, they had a revival that, that swept the whole island. And he went into a barn with a group of Christians. These were not spirit-filled. They were just good Christians. He went in that barn. And he said, we're going to pray because we have a word from God that by tomorrow the glory of God will be evidence all over the world. Are you listening to me? Are you sidetracked looking around? You don't even know where you're at? Listen to me. And they got in that barn, and it was a young boy, 10 years old, and they said to him, son, Duncan Campbell said, son, I have a tape of his. When you hear the tape, it'll shake the inside of your being. I let a person listen to it, and they pulled off the highway. Joe Matera and I sat in the back here one day because he's begged me for years. He has begged me over and over, could, could I listen to those tapes? Would you let me hear those tapes? So one night, him and I sat back there like two little kids with popcorn, and we listened to it. And here comes this guy, Duncan Campbell. God, if God ever moves, you'll never be the same. Well, what happened? A little 10-year-old boy, he said, sir, I'll be glad to pray, because Duncan asked him to pray. He took people by the hand, and he went to go to pray. And he said, I must stop. I cannot proceed. For if I pray now, then God will not be able to move. I must tell the devil that he has to leave. So the 10-year-old boy says, the devil, devil, you must leave right now. You cannot occupy this room, uh, this barn any longer. And the barn shook. And the barn began to shake back and forth. And by the time it finished, it had moved five feet. And the barn was shaking like this. And the Holy Ghost came in the barn. And by the next day, over 100,000 people had been swept into the kingdom of God. Because of one boy's prayer by the anointing of God through the Holy Ghost uh, that changed everything. People have illustrated the Holy Spirit like water. Water brings refreshing. I believe the Holy Spirit is like wine. Because what wine does, it changes everything. It brings confrontation. It brings change. It brings uh, an alteration. Are you hearing me? It brings influence. Can you hear that? Water refreshes, but wine influences. How many of you say, Lord, thank you uh, that you're going to pour out new wine. You're going to pour out some wine over the house of God. Uh, and we don't want just water. God, we got baptized in water. That's refreshing. But we want wine to be poured out. We want the anointing of God to be poured out in us right now. Would you stand and put your hands up and save the yawning and, and, and exercise for another day and raise your hands up and say, God, uh, Thank you. Let there be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit even here right now. Today, right now, in this room, God. Let there be a loosening, God. A loosening of religion. A loosening of death. Uh, and the death grip of fear. And the death grip of carnal thinking. May the carnal mind be crucified. <laughs> God, you said you would pour out on us. So, Lord, I pray for a new wine. Let that wine of influence, let that fire begin to burn, oh God. Let it become a hot fire, a hot fire, a hot fire. God, move people in this room. Move people in this room. Move over their life, God. Move over their life. Let every area they touch be affected. Let every area of their life be affected. Let everything they put their hand to be affected. God, I pray for their jobs. I pray for the city. I pray for this region. I pray for every area, God, that you will begin to pour out of your people. Let fire! Holy Ghost and fire! of you with Pentecost.
Pentecostal roots. You need to restore yourself today. You need to restore yourself to your Pentecostal root. You need to restore yourself. You need to repent. You need to say, God, forgive me for not experiencing all that I'm supposed to be, for not ex exercising and letting the Holy Ghost manifest in my life. If you're a Pentecostal person of heritage, you need to repent. And you need to loose the Holy Ghost in you. Let fire come in your hands. Let fire come in your mouth. Let fire come in your mouth. Let fire come in your mouth. For some of you here today, I know your background. I can see it in the spirit. Some of you came out of Pentecostal churches. You came out of your, your country. Some of you came out of other countries. And in those countries, you lived uh, and you moved uh, by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Uh, and you were taught from a child uh, of the value of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and you let the world, uh, you let the modern church rob you, rob you. Put your hands as high as you can put them up. You declare that your God is an awesome God. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and let God, uh, let God flow freely through you. This is the day you see you're supposed to lay hands on the sick. You're supposed to pray the prayer of the righteous. You're supposed to be walking in demonstration. The reason the people at your job don't want God is because you got cold. And all you got is ashes. You ain't got fire anymore. You ain't got that fire anymore. You remember when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? You remember when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? It lit you up. It lit your candle. You couldn't contain it. You couldn't contain it. You couldn't contain it. You were beside yourself. You didn't know what to do. You felt the moving of God. You felt the Spirit of God in you. Even as a child, some of you, you knew the power. You knew the power. You knew the power of God. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost while you're praying, keep praying. Well, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, but you want the Holy Ghost. Run down here right now. Run right now, right now. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, run down here right now. I promise you, you'll get the Holy Ghost immediately. Come down here right now. Get down here quickly, quickly, quickly. If you hesitate, you don't want it. If you hesitate, you don't want it. But if you want it, get down here right here, right here, right here. If you got the Holy Ghost today, you better pray now. You better pray now. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is not your ticket to heaven. The Holy Ghost is not your ticket to heaven. The Holy Ghost is the power of God to live every day an overcomer's life.